Hello and welcome to the Calculator Guy video on check your algebra using dual table mode with a focus on GCSE mathematics. We're going to use the dual table function, that's the table mode that has an FX and a GX on a Casio ClassWiz to help us out with this video. Now I'm doing this on an FX991EX Casio ClassWiz, although if you have the Casio FX83 or 85 GTX or other models of ClassWiz, you may very well have the two function table mode as well. So you'll be able to follow along with this video. So just check that out if you have. We're going to focus on two examples here that are GCSE maths style questions. Let's take a look at the first one here. We've got write 2x plus 2 over 3 plus 3x minus 2 over 2 as a single fraction in the form ax plus b over c, where a, b and c are integer values to be found. Now, it's important to emphasize here that the algebraic manipulation isn't going to be done by the calculator. You are going to have to do that. You can't take into the GCSE Maths exam a calculator that can do algebraic manipulation for you. You've got to do that. But we are going to use the calculator to verify our results and check how certain we can be that we've got the correct answer to this question. So if you wanted to pause the video now and have a go at this particular question, you can do. I'm just going to flash up the working afterwards. I'm not going to go through that. We're just going to take the answer from that and verify using the calculator. OK, so here's our solution and I got 13x minus 2 over 6, so A would be 13, B would be negative 2, and C would be 6 in this case. So let's go to table mode to verify if this is a correct solution. So it's 9 table, and we're prompted for fx, and for fx what we're going to do is to put in the algebraic terms that we were originally presented with. That is the two fractions at the top there, so it's 2x plus 2. Now it's worth noting here that the ClassWiz FX991EX has a dedicated X button, which is quite useful for this. If you're using other models, you may need to do alpha and right bracket, right parenthesis, to input an X. So we've got 2X plus 2 plus 3X minus 2 over 2. So there are our original terms. Press equals and if we're in the default mode, we should be prompted for a GX. If you have changed this, you might need to go into the setup menu and enable FX GX from the table setup in there. But by default, it should be that you've got a GX ready there. Um, in here, we're going to put our answer. So we've got 13X minus 2 all over 6. And then we're prompted for a range. So what we're going to do essentially is test a range of X values to see if they give the same results. So see if our FX, our original set of terms, gives the same result as the answer or our answer to the question. I'm just going to extend the range here a little bit just to give a fuller set of results. So I'm going from negative eight to eight and step one. So I'm just going to test integer values on this. Press equals and here we have side by side results from FX and GX. You can see if we scroll down that both FX and GX are giving the same results here. So we can be pretty confident then uh, that we've got the correct answer for this particular question with our 13x minus 2 over 6. It's giving the same results as what we originally had in the question. So we can be pretty confident that we've got that correct there. Now you don't always get 100% the same results with this technique. And we're gonna have a look at a second example where not all of the results match on either side. I'm just going to explain why that is and why the, we can still be pretty confident that we've got the right answer. So let's take a look at the second question. So write six minus, and then we've got a first set of brackets, second set of brackets with x plus four, and that is divided then, and then we've got a fraction x squared plus six x plus eight, all over x minus two. So a little bit more complicated there. We want to write that as a single fraction in the form ax plus b over cx plus d, where a, b, c, and d are integer values to be found. So once again, if you want to have a go at this yourself, you can pause the video now and have a go at the algebraic manipulation to find the answer. I'm going to bring up the solution now. So here we have the working, and the solution that we've got there is 5x plus 14 
over x plus 2. So how do we know if this is correct? What we're going to do is to go back into table mode to check these results once more. So I'm just going to press AC from here, taking me back and then AC once again just to clear out the one from uh, question one. And let's put in the original one here. It's going to be a little bit lengthy here. And I'll talk about the length of time just at the very end of the video. So we've got six minus, and then I'm going to copy this exactly. So put two sets of brackets, two sets of parentheses uh, in here. So then we've got x plus four divided by fraction. And then we've got x squared plus six x plus eight. Definitely a bonus to do this on a version of the class with, with the dedicated x button. I think we'll save a little bit of time there. Uh, all over x minus two, and then we're going to close the large bracket. Let's press equals then, and let's input our answer. So our answer was 5x plus 14 over x plus two, much simpler. And once again, we've got the start and end that we put it in for question one. I'm just going to keep that as those results. So let's press equals. And you can see that the first uh, results that we have here, we've got the same results for both FX and GX. But if we scroll down, we're going to see a slight difference. You can see here when X is negative four, we get error FX column, but we get a result for GX. And let's just have a look at why that is and why we don't particularly need to worry about that in terms of the verification. Well, if we inputted negative four into, well, the top part of the fraction part, X squared plus six X plus eight, well, X squared would be 16 plus six X, that would be minus 24, that's negative eight, plus eight would give us zero. And we'd end up in the situation where we'd be dividing by zero. So that's why the calculator has given us error there. Now that isn't obvious or apparent from that answer because we didn't have a defined uh, value for X or values that X could take in the initial part of our question. If we were just presented solely with uh, our final result there, five X plus 14, x plus two if we were just given that we wouldn't know that negative four wasn't a valid result so that's why we've got the difference between the two uh, results on there let's have a look at one that is uh, invalid for both so if we scroll down and we put in negative two then we've got an invalid result for both here error for both well on our answer it's pretty clear if we had negative two we'd have zero on the bottom of our fraction which we can't have and again negative two is a result that would give us zero here at the top. If we put that in a fraction, negative two squared is four plus six times negative two, that's minus 12, which gives us minus eight, plus eight, we'd get zero again. That's a result which quite clear, it's not valid for both. And if we continue to scroll down again, all the other results give the same. We've got another error at two there. And thinking about that same fraction, we'd have two minus two, which would give us zero on the bottom of that fraction, which again, uh, we, we wouldn't be able to do would give us an invalid result, but we wouldn't know that if we were just presented with GX. So just be careful, you do get some differences like this if we haven't defined what values X can and can't take. But other than that, all the other results verify. So we can still be very confident that we've got the right result here, the result that we want. Just wanted to make you aware that sometimes you can get these error results for your algebraic terms as they're initially presented. Okay, so a very good way there of being able to verify your results. Previously, there was a mode called Verify, and in fact, on some models of ClassWiz, it still exists. It was previously a mode. Uh, it isn't on the FX991EX or the 83 or 85 GTX. I think essentially it's been superseded by having this dual table mode function to be able to test various different X results simultaneously. And so we can verify that we've got the same result for FX and GX. It might be a fair question to say, well, this is going to take some time to do a little bit of time out, which is okay in the classroom or at home. But if you're in an exam situation, it would be time that you would be using. So is it worthwhile doing? Well, that's going to have to be a decision that's down to you, really. I think that it's good practice to get into the habit of verifying your answers using this technique and doing it relatively frequently so that the process becomes quite instinctive and quite quick that you can do it and then verify your result. I would argue that certainly with more complex cases, it, it probably is worthwhile spending the time just checking the result there. Maybe if it's a more simple, straightforward example, like perhaps the first question we looked at, maybe you can be pretty confident you've got that right and move on. 
Others, maybe you're not quite so confident. Maybe you do want to check, especially if there's a part B that uses the answer from this initial part that you've done. It might be worth checking just in case there is an error there. Uh, so you can go forward with the correct answer and avoid making any further mistakes. So I would argue it's probably worth taking the time to do. But you've got to make that decision as part of your exam strategy if you want to do this in the exam or not. Don't forget to like and subscribe for future videos. But that is it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time on The Calculator Guide.